Gaither could write a song, didn't he? Oh, man. He, 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 could, he could try a song. Bill Gaither wrote that one. Um, appreciate that special. If you have your Bibles, with me, uh, turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 5. We're beginning Romans chapter 5 today. Uh, we're just cruising right on, right along here. Uh, anybody, uh, it could be just me, but is anybody interested, ever interested, or been interested in cause and effects? Uh, what I mean by that, you ever heard of the butterfly effect? You know, because this happened, made to this to happen, 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 and boom, this this took place. I've always been um, intrigued by different causes and effects. You could go all the way back down to the simplest cause of, and effects. You know, because uh, I touched something hot. I burned my hand was the effect, you know, but but you can get on into deep things, but uh, th this this morning, uh, if I if I if I could, I want to read verses 25 of Romans chapter 4 just to kind of uh, bring us back to kind of where we are and remember where we finished off. It said it's talking about Jesus Christ. It says he was raised from the dead and then he was delivered for our offenses and raised again. For our justification. And the title of our message this, this morning is the effects of justification. And so because of what Jesus did, because he died, because his blood was shed, because he rose again, we have effects that, that come into our life once we have accepted this uh, free gift of salvation. And I'll just let you in before we get started. This is a good message. Uh, not maybe the deliverer may not be, but this passage of Scripture is a good, encouraging passage of Scripture. It's a great text. If you are here and you have accepted Jesus Christ, I'm fixing to tell you all of the effects that come with justification of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you something. There's nothing more important in this world than being justified. By Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you are not justified through the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm fixing to tell you all the things that you're missing out on. And if you're here and you're saved and you have been justified, I ought to hear a lot of amens this morning because of the effects that we have experienced through Jesus Christ. The cause and effects, the cause of the justification, these are the Effects. We're going to just start in verse 1. And we, we're going to stop every verse. And we're going to talk about something in every single verse. Because that's how... And listen folks, we ain't even going to scratch the surface of what Jesus does for us. But let's get started. Uh, without further ado, it says in verse 1, there, if, uh, Romans chapter 5, it says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. Number 1. We have peace. Amen. Listen, we live in a world that is yearning and longing for peace. We live in a very uh, unpeaceful time, don't we? We have a lot of distress. We have a lot of people wondering these things. Of, oh, I'm just, I'm just so nervous about what there is to come. And there's just so much uncertainty. Folks, I have peace. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you. Do I live through the same struggles as everybody else? Yep. A lost man. I, I, I mentioned this in my message at camp. I mentioned it here before. The only difference between uh, people burning in hell and people in heaven is uh, the people in heaven uh, are the people in hell are sinners, and people in heaven are sinners saved by God's grace. That's the mm -hmm. only difference. Mm -hmm. I'm going through the same things, uh, struggles, uncertainty. Uh, you don't think that it makes me un un I'm uncertain about what my children, what world my children are going to grow up in? I'm uncertain about it. I'm uneasy about it. But guess what I have that the world does not? I have peace that God's going to take care of it. It's in His hands. Uh, well, what good would it be for me to do to worry about it? It's not going to change anything. It's going to make me lose sleep. I have peace. That passes all understanding. Well, you know what that means? 
Yeah, you, know, you may have heard it a whole bunch of times. Peace that passes understanding. You know, the kids even say, I got your peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Listen, you know what that means? It means it don't make sense. <laughs> I mean, peace that passes understanding. It's peace. We have so much peace, and you can be given so much peace through Jesus Christ, through being justified, that it don't make sense. I don't know if that's good English. It don't make no sense. That's a double negative. I know that. But listen, we can have peace. I have peace. I pray you have peace through being justified by faith. And we can go back into that, but we've hit it enough. But we can do it again. Justified by faith. Nothing else. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only is there peace here on this earth through worldly things, but we have peace in the days to come. Brother James was talking about Sunday school this morning. And we'd love for, for you to come be with us in Sunday right. school. But uh, he was talking about dying grace and uh, how you can see people on their deathbed, and I've seen it. They have a peace. They're not bought, you know. They know that the end of their life is here. They know that it's over. They know they just have a few days, a few hours, or whatever the case may be. But they have peace. Folks, that's only through Jesus Christ. I don't care. I, I don't care who you are. There's none of us that are uh, too high and mighty and not to be afraid of death. But I'm gonna tell you, on our own, I'd be scared to death. I'm not with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and lie to you that I ain't scared of maybe how it may come to be. But I am not scared of death itself. Because I have a peace through Jesus Christ. Number two. It says, verse two, it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this, into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. The next thing we have, folks, is we have hope. This kind of plays back into our peace, but we have a hope that, that, that uh, not only is everything going to be okay, but I'm talking about folks, I'm looking into a hope that uh, uh, that I have an eternal life waiting on me. My soul that I have here on this earth, my soul is going to live forever. And I know that my soul is going to live forever in the presence of of Jesus Christ. And I have hope in that. Talk about the, the dying again. I have hope. Uh, you know, I've never been in that situation where I think my life could, could, could end soon. But I'd like to think that I have hope in Jesus Christ. Now, we've had some members here pass away in, you know, in the five years that I've been here. And I can tell you this honestly, the ones that I'm, that, that it, of course we have had people that have died that I didn't really know that well in the community and things like that, but talking, talking to church members, faithful church members, that you know they knew the Lord. None of them have been afraid. Uh, you know, I tell you, I remember Miss Gladys telling me, I don't know why everybody's upset. You know, I'm going to go and see Jesus. And Miss Sybil, she, uh, I remember her sister was, was, was crying at the news and she said, Oh, look, she said, I ain't upset, neither should you. Uh, folks, that's only Jesus Christ. I can remember my grandpa, he wasn't worried about anything as far as uh, himself. Uh, he wasn't worried about it. Folks, we have a hope. We have a hope in Jesus Christ. And, and, I, I, and I want to tell you something. I want to tell you this. There's a lot of things this world can do to you. They can ridicule you. They can they can they can slap you. They can they can kill you even. They can't take that hope away. Amen. There's nothing that can take the hope of Jesus Christ away once you have been justified through His blood. Next in verse three it says that not only so. But we glory in tribulations, also knowing that, excuse me, also knowing that tribulations work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Woo, let's listen, let's, let's break this down real quick. We have joy in tribulations. 
through our justification. Now what sense does that make? If there's anything to not be joyful about, it's when we're going through a tribulation. Anybody in here ever just welcome tribulation and said, oh man, I'm, I'm so excited for these hard times that are coming ahead. I'm excited for the, the, the struggles that I'm in. I'm excited for all of these things. And that's not what this is saying exactly that we're excited for. But what it is saying is that we can have joy in our times. How about the peace that passes all understanding? Folks, that's something that doesn't make any sense to a world. Look at the world. How can you have joy in tribulations? Well, it's kind of like I was talking this morning again at Sunday School, Brother James. It says that we are to, uh, we are to thank God in the hard times, in the bad times. Thank God for the bad times, even. They be thankful. Uh, uh, and, 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 and what it has all to do with is that, uh, or, or, or whenever we get into trouble, uh, you ever, uh, Lord ever had to get on to you? Uh, we can be thankful when the Lord is, is, is getting on to us, when we're maybe even getting a, a, a whooping from the Lord, or, or whenever we're, uh, you know, the Lord don't necessarily, He will. Sometimes He'll put you in time out, make you put your nose in the corner, but, uh, you know, those things, we can be thankful in there. Why? Because it says, those I love, I chase. Whenever you're chasing by God, you know what He's doing? He's saying, I love you. And I want you to fix this. We're not going to act like that. You ever had to tell your kids that? Or ever been told that? That's me. Oh, nope. Went away again. Alright. Get thee behind me Satan. But anyway. Uh, we can have joy in tribulations because we know that, guess what? No matter what this world throws at us, we're victorious. We can have the joy in these tribulations. Do you want me to tell you something? I think that's one of our best, or can be, one of our best evangelism tools is how we act in the hard times. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's easy, isn't it? It's this Sunday. We just got back from church camp. We had a great week. We're going to go eat. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. Oh, it's easy to praise God today. It's easy to be happy right now. It's easy to rejoice in the Lord today. But what happens when it comes Monday? And all oh, we got to we got to get up. We got to go and do these things. And oh, it's just uh, or maybe we've got to we've got to turn back to what problems we left on the weekend. And, Maybe you've got family issues right now. Maybe you've got money issues right now. Maybe you don't know uh, how you're going to pay bills this week. Maybe you, uh, you know, you've got family that is sick. Maybe you've got loved ones that are, 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 are you know, in terrible shape. How can we be joyful in those things? Through Jesus Christ. I'm going to take something. When a lost person or a world outside looks at you rejoicing in the tribulations, I'd say something to them. Did I, did, did, well, let me read it again. It says in verse uh, in verse three. It says, "But we can glory in tribulations." Does it does it say it's easy to do? You've got to find yourself in a great relationship with God. Because I've seen it time and time again, Christians, people who profess Christ, and I'm going to tell you what, I believe that they made, that they truthfully made legitimate uh, professions of Christ. But I've seen it time and time again, these people, they make these, they make these professions of faith, they get saved, maybe get baptized, maybe get in the church, and then something happens. Whether it's small or whether it's big, Something happens. And they just turn away. You don't know what that's from? That's from not being rooted into what God's teachings are. That, that, that's for being a baby in Christ. I've seen people get mad at Jesus. I've seen people get mad at God. I've seen people curse God. I've seen people who love God at one point in their life or made professions of faith to them say, I don't even know if I believe in Him anymore. 
tribulation. But how I think of Job, don't you? Oh, he, 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 his wife, his own wife, said, why don't you just curse God and die? Do you know what he would have, what testimony Job would have had if he had done that? Wouldn't have had a very good one. I, I, I keep going back. We'll move on after this, but I keep going back to, to, to my, the most uh, memorable verse to me in all of Job that I think about a lot. It didn't even it doesn't even really get into the story of Job and all he loses everything, but it's whenever Satan and God are talking. Satan says, "Oh yeah, you know I've been here back and forth and this and that. And I've been back to the earth and I've seen all the things." And God says, have you considered my servant Job? That's what I think about. Because that means that he was such a faithful servant. Such a, such a loyal uh, follower of God. That, just like any proud parent, God was bragging on his son. I, I, hope, I hope that I made God proud enough for he to brag on me. Uh, not because I, 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 I want the bragging for myself, but that I know I made God proud. Anyhow, uh, joy and tribulations, patience, experience, more hope there in verse 4. Um, uh, we, 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 we've seen. Uh, I need all the patience I can get. I'm just being honest with you. I know, none of you, know nobody else here. If nobody else here has ample amount of patience, but me personally, I need patience. Uh, you can ask my wife. I don't think I make any sense because it'll be these big things, right? like something that, that that you should get up in arms about. And I'll just be like, hey, be all right, you know, it's okay, we'll figure it out. And, but then the littlest inconvenience, I'll just, you know, I'll just lose my cool on that. Uh, I need patience. Uh, tribulations bring about those patience, and with that patience, with patience comes experience, and experience. Guess what? More hope. Uh, if it wasn't enough, God keeps adding to it. Continuing along there in verse 5. It says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God shed abroad in our hearts the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Listen, verse 5 tells us that one of the effects of justification is our shame is gone. Listen, we are shameful people. We live in shame. We're filthy, we're dirty, but guess what? The justification of Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed for us erases our shame. I didn't say it takes away our sin. We still sin. We still fall short, but it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. My sin uh, is paid for. My sin is covered. My shame is gone. And not only that, but we're also given, in verse 5 it tells us, the Holy Spirit, which is given to us, the Holy Ghost. Listen, we couldn't be who we are today without the Holy Spirit. You can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let me tell you this while we're just at it. When you are saved, you have all the Holy Spirit you're ever going to get. God don't just divvy it up and give it to you in, 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 in increments. Gives you the whole thing. I'm thankful for that. And listen, I'll tell you this while we're here too. We need to work on not quenching it so much. Amen. We need to let the Holy Spirit work if we're ever going to be effective as we can be. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to work instead of suppressing it. But verses 6 through 8 tells us, it's all it's, it's still told us we have to. You have hope. You have joy and tribulations. Patience. You'll get experience more hope. Your shame is gone. You got the Holy Spirit in this. But wait a second. Don't get too high up on your high horse. First of all, you didn't do none of it anyway. Verses 6 through 8. It tells us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I'm not didn't, doesn't in there a verse in the Bible says Jesus died for the world? God so loved the world, he says, oh, God, son. So is this verse here telling us that we're ungodly? Yep. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die, 
Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. And then the most famous verse in this passage, in this chapter here, says, But God commanded His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. He said, all these things are great, but don't get on your high horse. Don't go around saying, oh yeah, I have this blessed hope. I have this blessed peace. I have this joy in tribulations. I have the Holy Spirit. I have all of these things. My shame is gone. He says, it's only because of Jesus. Amen. There's no other way. Uh, it's not you. It says in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Well, folks, Jesus Christ died for me. He died for you. You were uh, uh, ungodly. There's nothing godly about me. We talk about righteousness. There's nothing righteous about me. Or any of you here except for Jesus Christ. Amen. We're ungodly. We're the enemy. What's the enemy of God? Sin. I was a sinner. I'm the enemy of God. And, and, and while I'm the enemy of God, He still sent His Son to die for me. Listen, uh, we, 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 we understand that Jesus Christ bore our sins. He wore them. They were on Him. My sins. The Father had to look away from Him because He had sin. But his sin wasn't even his own. It was mine. Oh. We, we have nothing to boast about. When somebody sees you, hopefully you're living this way and you have this joy and this peace and this hope and this patience and this shame being gone. and uh, you, you exude the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> And somebody, because listen, somebody will give you credit for it. Say, oh, you're just, you know, you're just a, a joy to be around, and you got you, you point to Jesus. See, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Matthew chapter 5, when it talks about being a lot of the world, it says that we are to be a lot of the world so that we may point others to Him. Not for us to say, look at me, I'm this ray of sunshine. He commanded his love toward us. He showed it. Now, is that word you use? Commanded. He commanded his love toward us. He, he left no doubt that he does love us. He, he, he not only just sent it, he commanded it. He said, This is this is a clear thing. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Though we didn't deserve it. He died for us. It's only because of God that we have these benefits. We were sinners, enemies of God, yet He loved us. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. We have no boasting to do. Verse 9, we continue on with these effects, these, these, these uh, results of justification. It says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Number uh, verse 9, we are told one of the effects of salvation, one of the effects of justification is we are saved from wrath. What wrath are we talking about here? Are we, is it talking about the, the, the wrath of God when you mess up here on earth? No, we're still going to be chastised, chastened by the Lord. But what it's talking about is our ultimate uh, uh, what we ultimately deserve, which is hell. People sometimes will look at, his, at, at his salvation as a get out of hell free card. And that's wrong to do. But guess what? It is a get out of hell card. So it is something that we should rejoice in. That we, mm -hmm. through the justification of Jesus Christ, we are saved from wrath what we deserve, which is hell. You know, you, you realize that. Each and every one of us deserve hell. Anybody here want to argue and say, no, I've been good enough, I don't deserve hell? Each and every one of us. But 
because of the justification, the identity is we uh, are saved from it. Verse 10, it says, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, uh, we shall be saved by His life. We are reconciled. Another effect of it. Uh, folks, we have... We have been enemies of God. Well, so you want to go all the way back to the beginning of time, Adam and Eve. They, the, the first, because of what they did, there had to be blood shed, right? They had to be clothed. You think God ever intended for that to happen? You, this may be a bad analogy, but you ever remember, anybody here when you're growing up, play with Lincoln Logs? Those have been around a long time, even maybe the... Folks who have more advanced or have more years than I do. Play with Lincoln Logs. You ever play with Lincoln Logs, Legos, stuff like that? I had a bit much of Lincoln Logs growing up. <coughs> and you build something. And you build it just right. And when you did, did you ever have a sibling come in and just kick it over? How angry did it make you? Times that by about a million. God made this perfect world for us. He made us perfect. He, 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 he made us sinless. He gave us dominion over all that He created. Listen. And yet, we walked up and we kicked His creation over. And in verse uh, 15 of Genesis chapter 3, we're promised of the Savior. And blood had to be shed for their sins. But folks, we have been reconciled and we shall be saved by His life. And last verse here in verse 11, it says, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. We have joy and atonement because of justification. Folks, this has nothing to do with me and you. I stand here today as a sinner preaching to sinners, as a dying man preaching to dying men, as an enemy of God preaching to the, 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 the army of, of iniquity. Folks, uh, this is just the truth of all of it. None of us are good. Except we be justified. I'm thankful for my justification. Amen. I'm thankful for Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that though I deserve nothing, though I deserve eternity in hell, though I deserve shame, that I have peace, that I have hope, that I have joy in tribulations, I have patience. Patience gives me more experience. Experience gives me more hope. That my shame is gone. <clears throat> that I have the Holy Spirit. That even though I was an enemy of God. That I was a sinner. That I didn't have to do anything to prove anything. That He still loved me enough to die for me. That I have God's love. That I'm saved from wrath and what I deserve. That I'm reconciled. That I have joy unspeakable. That my sins have been atoned for. All from Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question today. Do you know those things? Amen. Are they prevalent in your life? Listen, uh, not only uh, do you not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm asking you today, have you suppressed those things? Maybe you do know Jesus Christ as your Savior, but you're not experiencing these things because maybe you're not living like you ought to for Him. We can lose the joy of our salvation. We can lose what God intended for us to have. We can find ourselves in a place that God had never intended for one of His children to be. Guess what? He's standing with arms wide open saying, just come on back. And if you're not saved, He's standing there with arms wide open saying, just come to me. I'll take care of it. All of the things you're experiencing 
I'll give you peace. I'll give you joy. I'll give you love. I'll protect you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, today is the day of your salvation. You know that God's calling. Don't walk out.